Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, in a recent video I was looking at the AirSpy HF Plus Discovery and using the GQRX SDR software to operate it. Now GQRX is built on GNU Radio, GNU Radio, which is a framework for building through building blocks of different software your own um, software-defined radio projects. Very complicated, very complex, extremely capable, it's a wonderful software suite, and GQRX is an excellent example of that. An entire receiver package put together in new radio and released as its own standalone program. Uh, one of the things that it has is it has remote control or rig control through a network port. So GQRX could be running on one computer on your network, and from another computer on the network you could control it remotely. Uh, that doesn't include transferring audio, but there's ways to do that with Pulse Audio and, and so on. Uh, but the the better utility there, or the more useful utility for some things, I guess. Well, that was uh, that was vague, wasn't it? <laughs> um, one of the utilities to that functionality is interfacing it with other software. Um, we'll take a look at the computer here, and I'll show you an example or two of what uh, is already available that you can do with GQRX. And then I'm going to write my own little Python script to control it and uh, do a couple of things. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, first off, network ports. Uh, GQRX uses a specific port or socket. And I thought, let's do a quick little description of what the heck network ports are, for those of you that don't know. You've probably heard the term port forwarding. Uh, before with certain software, perhaps with Echolink. Uh, but what are ports? Well, let's go to the computer and let's quickly talk about ports. This is GQRX. We've looked at it before. And as I mentioned, it has remote control options. Right here is an icon for remote control via TCP. And if we go up here to Tools, there's Remote Control Settings. If we select that, we have some options here. We can choose which uh, computers we can allow to connect to it for security, uh, but we also have listen on port and the default is 7356. Now what is a network port? Well in the past, uh, on another video, I was explaining network addressing. You have a computer and it has a network connection and it can receive connections from a lot of different services and other computers. But how does information on the network, how do packets on the network get routed to your particular computer? And in the past, I explained that by likening uh, network addresses, the IP addresses, to mailing addresses on houses on a street. And those addresses allow packets to find your computer the same way that the street addresses of houses allow the mailman to find your house to deliver mail. So what are network ports? Well, uh, your computer might need to receive connections from many different services or programs, like a web browser or an SSH uh, connection or an FTP connection for transferring files. And all these different programs will use the same IP address. Your computer has one IP address. So how do those packets know or get routed to the right programs? Well, to further my analogy or expand upon it, instead of thinking of network addressing on computers like house addresses on a street, think of your computer as an apartment building. And in that apartment building in the different apartments, you have different programs living, like a web server or an FTP server. And then the network traffic coming in needs to find that program while well, it gets directed to the proper apartment through the port numbers. Port numbers are like the apartment numbers in an apartment building within your computer. So a packet comes in for an FTP server, it'll have a specific port that it addresses. If it's coming in for a web server, it'll be coming in on port 80. Ports are a way to take that single IP address and further organize it out into various connections. Up to 65,535 ports can be defined on a computer. 
and the first 1024 are fairly specific to specific services, but above 1024, the ports can be assigned to pretty much anything you want. So back here in GQRX, we have the default port of 7356. How do you connect to that? Well, software can connect to it directly using the Telnet protocol. Telnet is a terminal program. So if I open up a Linux terminal here and I type Telnet, it's going to run and it'll, uh, it'll have various commands to allow us to connect to things. Uh, well, there's a lot of commands, but the main one we're interested in is connecting to a port. And uh, we'll do that by typing in an IP address, Telnet. And I'm going to be pointing right back to my computer here. I'm not going out on the network. It's going to loop back internally. And the, uh, the internal loopback address of your computer is always 127.0.0.1. And then we need the port number and uh, 7356, because we're not going to the default Telenet port. We're going to go to GQRX. But before I can hit enter and do that, I need to start GQRX. So I've got it on, well, that's a two meter frequency. Let's go, let's go to uh, HF, yeah, seven megahertz, lower sideband, normal filter, and we'll start it. And I'm gonna turn its volume down because uh, we don't really need to hear it right now. All right, we'll go here to the remote control icon and we'll click that to activate it. And now GQRX is listening on port 7356. So it's waiting for any program to come in on that port and ask for a connection. So if I run Telnet here, we got connected. And there, uh, if I hit a question mark, I think GQRX will tell us, nope, it won't tell us what commands there are. Um, help. I can't remember the help command, but that's okay. I actually have the full list of commands that GQRX supports here. They provide that on their developer page, and there's quite a few. A lowercase f will get the current frequency in hertz. Let's try that. We'll bring GQRX to the front, we'll bring our terminal back to the front, and we'll type in a lowercase f. And there it is, 7 megahertz. And GQRX answered back with the, with the frequency. So there's several commands in here. We can, uh, uh, we can set the frequency with a capital F. Uh, lowercase m will give us the current mode. Capital M will allow us to set the mode and the filter. L will give us uh, the signal strength of the currently received signal. Um, L, SQ, and uh, SQL will give us the uh, current squelch threshold and we can set it with a capital L. You see a pattern there, lowercase letter to receive data from GQRX, capital letter to set some data in GQRX. Um, lowercase u will give us the status of the audio recorder. Capital U will uh, set the uh, audio recorder to a uh, current status. You can turn it on and off that way. Um, another way to, to start audio recording in GQRX is uh, capital AOS. Acquisition of signal events, start audio recording. LOS, loss of signal, stop audio recording. So there's there's quite a few commands here that will let us do various things with GQRX. Um, oh, he added uh, some commands for Hamlib compatibility and split for Hamlib compatibility. So the main commands that we're interested in here are the F for setting and getting the frequency, M for setting and getting the mode and filter size, and L for getting the strength. So there's several... Um, well, let's, let's try a couple of those. Let's do a lowercase m to see what our current mode is. Lower sideband with a filter of 2.7k. Let's try and change the frequency. Let me bring GQRX back to the foreground. So a capital F and our frequency. Let's say we want to go to 14,300, 1, 2, 3. So 14,300,000, 14.3 megahertz. Boom, and you could see GQRX back here changed its frequency. So we're actually controlling it with Telnet. This could be interesting if you had GQRX running on your computer and you were sitting across the room in your Lazy Boy recliner uh, with your laptop. You could Telnet into GQRX and change its frequency and mode and filter, kind of like a, a simple remote control. 
But I'm interested in doing other things. What other programs and things can we do with it? Well, let's take a look at satellite control. This program here is called G-Predict. It's a open sourced uh, satellite tracking program that will allow you to predict satellite passes and uh, watch them as they go overhead, time uh, your operations on satellites and so on and so forth. Useful little program. It also supports radio control where the G-Predict program can control your radio to adjust its received frequency and compensate for the Doppler effect. As a satellite is approaching your location and moving towards you at a high rate of speed, the speed of the satellite is going to be added to the speed of the radio wave in a sense. It's the Doppler effect. It's, it's going to change the frequency, the apparent frequency to you uh, by uh, the added velocity of the satellite and then as it moves past and goes away from you the, re the uh, receding velocity of the satellite is going to reduce the received frequency. Uh, the Doppler effect, well, you could research that if you want uh, to find out more information. But anyway, G-Predict can control radios. And it has a radio control module. You, uh, oh, you access that by hitting this little down arrow up here, and you go down here to radio control. It has a separate antenna control module, which could actually be used to control a gimbal system on beam antennas, per, for example, and physically track satellites as well. But we're going to look at radio control here. And uh, I've already set the device to GQRX, uh, which is already set to the right port, 7356. Um, if I was going to track, say, the ISS during a pass, 145.890 is the default frequency. And what would happen, I mean, we've got... Uh, uh, hours, like nine hours before the next ISS pass, so I can't really demonstrate it live, but I can show this taking control. Uh, if the ISS was going to make a pass, I'd click track here, and what would happen is, as the ISS moved into our visible horizon, this would start adjusting the downlink frequency and the uplink frequency optionally, um, based on the Doppler effect. So the frequency would, would change here and you'd see it slowly changing, going up or down, as the ISS approached us and then as it went past us. Uh, and if I hit engage, what we should see happen is we should see the frequency over here on GQRX change to 145.89. Okay, well, it's, it's trying to compensate for what it figures the uh, uh, the Doppler effect would be for where the ISS is right now. So you can actually see this is changing, and it's changing GQRX up here. See that? 634, 634. So as the ISS was passing by, this would be changing a little bit quicker, but it would be tracking the receive signal over here on GQRX so that we stay dead on the received signal we're going to get from the ISS as it passes. So that's one example of using the remote option, remote control option in GQRX. But I wanted to do something of my own. Uh, so I fired up Python, and I spent the day experimenting with controlling GQRX through my own script. And uh, let's go to that segment now, and I'll show you that it worked. Here is the Python script that I wrote. It took me a couple of days of farting around with it, because like I said, I'm not a programmer. Just had to kind of figure things out as I went along. So uh, just for a demonstration of what you could do, or, you know, just one thing that I could do, uh, I wrote this script, and uh, it does several things. Um, it uses the Telnet lib for Python, which is a Telnet client, and then... Uh, uh, it, well, it's, it's, I'm not going to go through the whole script. Uh, there's really no point. This is just me playing around to see what kind of things we can do with uh, the network socket control of GQRX. Basically, what this script is going to do is it's going to uh, read... Well, that's what we do here. We read the current state of GQRX frequency and mode and save that so I can put it back the way it was when I'm done. 
And then uh, I have several steps here that go to each of the WWV frequencies, 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz. Um, reads the signal level over uh, about three seconds, averages that out, and returns the average. And then uh, at the end here, it sets GQRX back to the state and frequency that it was at when uh, we started the script. So let's try it out. Uh, I've got my terminal open here. GQRX is running and we're listening to 40 meters. I'll let you hear that for a second. Okay, so there's a net running. Now I'm gonna run the script. And what you wanna watch is watch GQRX here in the background. You'll see it changing frequency and mode as the different parts or the different WWV broadcasts are measured. And there we go. It has completed. It uh, measured the signals from WWV on all their transmitters. And then it put the uh, program back where I had originally had it. Now we can take a look at the data down here and we can see that right now the strongest signals we're getting from WWV are on 10 megahertz. And uh, you can see, uh, you know, we're, we're this is um, the, the uh, larger the negative number, the lower the signal. The smaller the negative number, the higher the signal. So 10 megahertz was our highest here. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the road on 5 and 15. 20 is the worst signal by far, and 2.5 is down there too. So we can kind of tell that we're in daytime propagation. I can see that uh, signals are okay on 5 and okay on 15, but really good around 10 megahertz right now. So... <laughs> I was a, I can tell that uh, you know the bands closer to 10 megahertz are going to be more open at this point in time. So yeah, that's just a quick demonstration of of using uh, the remote control capabilities of GQRX through network sockets. So yeah, having remote control on GQRX is kind of cool. As you saw, I wrote my own script to do something. What what would you do? You know what what kind of things can you think of that you might do? with uh, remote software control of the receiver. Uh, you have the receiver running on a computer that's hooked up to your stereo system, uh, maybe a headless media player, and uh, be able to remotely control it from your tablet or laptop. Who knows? You know, there's all kinds of possibilities. It's, it's kind of cool being able to do that so easily with TCP. And uh, virtually any program that can talk to a network port should be able to talk to GQRX. And as we saw from the commands here, very simple commands that you send to it and get uh, responses back with. So it's fairly easy to interface with. Kind of cool, huh? So there you go. That's uh, one example of utilizing the remote control capability of GQRX uh, with your own software. Uh, I hope you found that useful and interesting and perhaps entertaining. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.